Hi everyone, Brittany here from Teach Me ABA. And if you've been watching us so far, I'm so excited we're gonna continue with our Task List 5 series for those of you that are studying for the BCBA exam. Now, if you've been following us, we've already been covering section C, which is measurement, data display, and interpretation of your data. Uh, up next, we're gonna go ahead and move on with section D. Now, this is experimental design. And in this video, we're gonna cover the difference between your dependent and your independent variables, whether it's conducting research or clinical interventions. So let's get into it. As a reminder, all of our definitions and information come directly from the Cooper, Heron, and Heward third edition of Applied Behavior Analysis 2020. So you should be using that to study for this exam. Everything that we use, directly from there. So let's talk about a dependent variable. Now this is defined as a quantifiable uh, dimension of your target behavior. So in other words, we are uh, looking at this as our target for change. Uh, typically within ABA, this is the behavior that you want to improve, uh, whatever it is, depending if it's aggression, maybe it's uh, reading words, sight words to help your client, um, whether you want them to have independent living skills. These are examples of those dependent variables that we want to increase or decrease. At least we know this much, that the levels in which the dependent variable occur, those should be the ones that are changing after you're introducing the what? Your independent variable. Now, for example, let's say that we're introducing a teaching procedure um, as the independent variable to see rates of man's increase in the dependent variable. As we've discussed in the previous video, that the dependent variable is listed on the y-axis and it represents the quantifiable dimension of the target behavior being studied and observed. Now let's move on to our independent variable. Now this is the environmental condition uh, that's going to be manipulated or changed which leads to the target behavior again, our dependent variable. So often the independent variable is a specific behavioral um, intervention that aims to increase or decrease a disruptive behavior, or again, it can be an independent living skill, it just depends. Now, for instance, let's say that you want to implement a DRO procedure, um, and it may be introduced as an intervention to decrease a disruptive behavior or you're teaching a procedure um, that might be uh, introduced to increase how often a client asks social questions. And the introduction of both of these interventions would be considered your independent variable. Uh, and the subsequent changes of the participant's behavior uh, would be the dependent variable. So I know what you're all thinking. Brittany, all of these definitions and these examples are Great, but what about having a mock exam question? Well, guess what? I wrote one for you. So my example that I have listing for the difference between a dependent and an independent variable is as follows. Jenny is a BCBA that is taking data on the frequency of lessons being run by her behavior therapist across each of her clients on her caseload. So Jenny is observing how behavior skills training, BST, improves the performance of her therapist after training them using that particular procedure. Now, go ahead, think about it a little bit. You might have to pause and tell us which one is the dependent variable and the independent variable. Okay, there you have it. I hope that mock um, exam question helped. Um, and so good luck studying out there. As always, we look forward to your questions, your comments. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next week.